have a field day. We're going to have a field day today. I don't know if that's uh, an English term as well, uh, technical weather. We have that in the Netherlands, of course. Netherlands is famous for terrible weather. So when it's technical weather, that's the time when you go out in the field and you collect your data. Let's go, technical day. No. So uh, I brought my tablet and it's nice weather. Uh, so we're sitting here in a too small room where temperatures will rise like mad. And we're going to have uh, four field applications here in this session, each uh, of a half an hour. Uh, we have uh, three data collecting apps and then one for IoT solutions. Um, so Andrea, you're first. You, you can set the stage and, and, and raise the bar for all the, all the other uh, um, would, uh, presentations. I, I there you go. <laughs> Thank you very much. So. Okay, I'm here. Usually I start this presentation with telling who I am and for those that don't know Gio Paparazzi, I would have some slide to introduce it. But the last year around Gio Paparazzi has been so crazy that I have such a load of slides and features that I want to show that I will just skip over this, skip over this and tell just for those that really never saw Gio Paparazzi, it's a f uh, field mapping application where you can collect notes, logs, and images. Uh, if you really do not know after this presentation what's the use for it, yes, please track me down outside and I will really talk you in and show you the applications. What I want to talk to you today is two things. One is the big migration, because GeoPaparazzi historically has been bound as a rendering, uh, mapping render, rendering engine to a project called MapsForge. And moreover, it was bound to an ancient version of MapsForge. And for that reason, uh, we started to see some limitations. And we were starting in the last year very slowly to, to looking for funds and you say, yeah, sooner or later we will find some funding to get to a new rendering system. We started to look into another whirlwind Android, which was looking very promising because it had also the possibility to do some editing in a very, very simple way. And then we gave a look at the latest map source. But you know, it was just like, yeah, at some point if it's really necessary. And so, what happened, it got really necessary because some issues arose this year and the two major ones were that Android stopped permitting HTTP. So downloading, on, uh, downloading online tile sources uh, simply didn't work anymore with the HTTP protocol. And this ancient version of MapsForge was a bit too slow with HTTPS and this led or is still leading because the version is still online, and if you're accessing with a new phone, you will have this problem, it led to freezing. And moreover, MapsForge, which is, in my opinion, the coolest offline map possibility that you have on your phone, uh, brought out a new specification for multi-language and a couple of other cool things, and we were no longer able to support that. And so we were, yeah, forced our hands and we started to think, yeah, let's migrate to something. And luckily, or yeah, maybe luckily is not the right word, it's a bit unfortunate, but NASA Worldwind got shut down by the government because of the lack of fundings. And so we thought, yeah, by exclusion, maybe MapsForge is the perfect tool for us. And we started to migrate towards MapForge. And after initial try, we also made a small test with a project that's called uh, VTM, it's vector tile map, which is also right now supported or maintained by the MapsForge community. And in the end, we decided to migrate to VTM, basically because it's extremely smooth and it has 3D and it supports vector tiles. So where are we right now? Uh, I think the migration, the port is basically done. Uh, we also got Jupaparazzi back to be compatible with Android 5, which is not so bad because it was around 6, 7. It, we were excluding a lot of phones. And the user manual has been ported completely by this guy named Brand Fraser, which I have to thank for this. And also for, he was the, the one, he owned an Android 5 phone, so he pushed me a little bit to say, yeah, can't, can't, can't we get back? Yeah, And we did it, so it's quite good. And I've been testing this uh, version for months now. I've been using it throughout, and I think it's in a very good shape. 
But enough chit chat, and let's see some of the features. So the first thing is we now have layers. Uh, historically, Joe Paparazzi had the possibility to have a background layer and then special light streams and GP GPS log streams on top of it. Now we have finally layers. Everything is a layer from the GPS log to the GPS icon to the position to the info. Everything is a layer. Project layers are just there. You can enable them, disable them. But then you have map layers. It has user layers. And you can drag them around. Because now, the cool thing is you can overlay different data sources on your mobile phone. Here you see a map, or a risk map, in MBTAL format with a uh, technical map overlaid on MapsForge. And if the layer source supports certain properties, you can also switch them. So for example, uh, for example MBTAL's layer support transparency, so you can drag a bit of transparency and you will have, in this case, it's not really the perfect example with a MapsForge map and this overlay, but it gives an idea. If the layer supports editing, then you will now uh, enable and disable for editing. This is basically a right now for special light layers. You can enable and disable editing from this view. The map properties, as I said, we chose it because maps are smooth. There is a graphic acceleration that comes with VTM, and it's really cool. And something that is extremely cool for me is that maps can now be rotated. And for certain, there are certain data sources, basically maps, forge maps, and also those nodes that you insert during your survey that obey to the rotation rules, which means if you, th these two screenshots are 180 degrees rotated, and as you can see, the labels are kept readable. Clearly, if you upload an MB tiles source where you have technical maps with text on it and you rotate, these are static, so you will have them upside down. But some vector tile source and map source source, they obey to this rotation, which is kind of cool. And then we have 3D. It's probably the most whoa, feature that we have now. Uh, even if I don't really think that uh, during the survey it will be of big use because you will be out in the nothing most probably. But uh, map source maps uh, that have the information of the buildings contained, they generate an uh, a part of the base layer, a 3D layer, and a labels layer that you can, in the properties of the layers, switch on and off. And this gives the possibility to also overlay the 3D buildings on your own map, like on your technical maps. In this case, it's an MB tiles layer with on top of it the 3D buildings. And in cases like risks map, and so it gives another visual, a different visual impact of, yeah, my house is maybe there or there. So it's quite cool to see. Um, regarding maps, forge maps, since there is the thing that 3D layers are generated for some kind of data sources, these data sources are kept together. So all maps, forge maps you load, they are merged in one single layer so that you have one single three-dimensional layer on top of it. And since there is no performance drawback, I would say this is quite cool. So as you can see, if you add maps, forge maps, you will find a, one layer that states, yeah, Italy, Romania, Slovenia, Hungary. And it will contain all of them. And as you can see, it's really simple now to have a lot of map sources on your device because the maps forge format, for those that do not know, is really small and contains the whole nationwide data. Uh, the center GPS info button, which was used to send to the map on the GPS position, now has also a long type option, and you can now tell, yeah, please send my map on the GPS and rotate it with the heading. So if you are walking or if you're driving, the map will keep in the direction of your movement. And you can also enable uh, to visualize the GPS information as they come to you. So what did we get lost in the, progress, in the process? Well, first of all, a couple of features like WMS support. Uh, it's possible to bring it back, but it's quite some work. So for now, it has been left out. And then there is an issue with uh, special light uh, labeling 
So right now you can visualize specialized layers, but you can't set layers on top of it. And then we have an issue with uh, VTM, which has a poor support for line caps and joints, which means on the edges there are strange thing happen. We are looking and still investigating this also with the VTM community. What can happen on wide zoom outs, uh, for example, polygon layers, this is from special light, can show strange artifacts, whereas if you zoom in, they disappear. So we are looking into this right now. Uh, so this is everything regarding the new geopaparazzi features. In the last year, the second big thing we did and we talked about was uh, iOS support. We had several requests, yeah, why doesn't it work on iOS? And so we started to work in, yeah, a couple of months ago on iOS support for Geopaparazzi. And during this analysis of, the analysis of this project, we noticed a few things. Yeah, one was maybe it was the moment to choose a different name. Because so many people told us, yeah, Joe Paparazzi, this, or oh, my employer won't buy because it's a strange name. So we have solved this. We have solved this. And the user interface maybe had to be revisited because the feeling was that the dashboard is something obsolete. There should be something more simple. So we started first to think about the name. What would be the name that would attract everything, every single reasonable mapper towards this application, and we came up with something beautiful. Smart mobile application for surveyors' happiness. <laughs> In short, SMASH! <laughs> Please welcome SMASH, thank you very much. <laughs> so I apologize to all those that have to tell their employers that now it's called SMASH, but it's really cool. So, uh, Smash is an application written... <laughs> <laughs> so, Smash is an application written in Flutter, which is a cross-platform uh, framework by Google, and is released for iOS and also for Android. The first test we did, we made an uh, exactly same Joe Paparazzi-like version, and then we figured with Flutter you can do better stuff. And we started to do it like this. So now you open it up, you, you, or better, you open up Smash and you will find yourself directly in the map view. You have a toolbar at the bottom where everything happens. And for the less common operations, you have a slider on the left and on the right. So what are the weaknesses against Joe Paparazzi? Well, first of all, you have no support for special light. Right now, the basic mapping functionalities for surveys are supported, like forms uh, and logs and points, but not special light. The performance of the map, the offline map of MapSwatch, is not, not as cool as in Joe Paparazzi, and even less right now where Joe Paparazzi is really like smooth like oil. And some of the features are not yet ported. But the interesting thing is, the databases, the projects are perfectly compatible, which means you can start serving with one, open it with the other, do whatever you like. Smash, the only thing it does, it adds a couple of tables in which it adds the information to the nodes because as you will see, it will have nice icons and some other stuff. But it's completely compatible. What's the good part of it? I think the Already the fact that it works on iOS is enough, but yeah, some of the stuff has been already ported and you have some facilities for iOS users because I've never been an iOS user, but when I started to debug and test this application, I figured, how do you do? I mean, you can't get data out of it. You need a, a Mac. When I log in somewhere, it asks me for the other device and I don't have it here. It's really a strange world, but I'm sure you're happy with it, and that's why we tried to make this for iOS. So, the toolbar. What is about the toolbar? Um, every button you see there has a double function. The one tab is the action, the long tab is show the information of what you collected. So the first button is add a simple note, or show me the list of all the notes. The second is add form note which also has been split. Before it was a bit different, 
now we have simple nodes and form nodes, or show me the list, or start a log, or show me the logs list. The center position, again, the GPS button shows the center, centers the map on the pos uh, GPS position, or shows you GPS information or tools. And then we have the usual tools like zoom in, zoom out, and the layer view, and like project information. The really beautiful thing is you now see you have the counters over the icons uh, that show you how many, uh, how many nodes you have surveyed and that, that gives also sometimes information if you're opening the right project because you know uh, what you're working on. Notes. You open a note, you have the possibility to add either text notes, simple notes, we're talking about simple notes, either text note or image notes and if you open them it goes to the third screenshot and where, while in Jopaparazzi you could not modify simple notes, here you can. You can change the text, you can change the color, the size, and you have icons now for different purposes. And if you long tap, you will be presented, this is my project here for Bucharest, and you will present it with a nice list of stuff. Um, when you tap on the map of one of these nodes, it will show you a snack bar with uh, some information and the possibility to either share or edit that note, which would bring you back to the properties tab, or directly delete that note. And this was never possible in GeoPaparazzi. If there is an image, it will show you a thumbnail of the image, and if you tap on it, it will show you a nice viewer of the image where you can zoom in and out and really float around your image. Forms work exactly the same way as they did in GeoPaparazzi, but uh, the one thing they support more is they can have icons. So GeoPaparazzi will ignore those icons, but Smash will load them. So you can also have in the case of your forms, for those that do not know, you make a form definition and all the forms you created will appear here as buttons. And you can set the icons, so if you have a particular survey, you can have those icons having some meaningful, uh, show something meaningful. Uh, the form works the same way, but the user interface is much cleaner, in my opinion. And also inside, you can embed icons and in your forms. <coughs> Logs are exactly the same. You can just start logging, toggle logging on and off, and show the list from where you can style the log uh, in whatever you want and change the name. <coughs> the central button shows a snack bar with the last GPS position available. You can copy that position down there and copy it over. And from here, you can also enable uh, centering, uh, map centering on the GPS position and map rotation. The layer view, uh, currently we support online TMS maps, maps for GMB tiles and GPX. In GeoPaparazzi, GPX are imported in the project database. Here they are loaded natively, let's say, as a layer. So you can overlay the, uh, them on each other. And um, other than if these things we have, you've seen in the notes view that we're a couple of icons. And those icons are a default set that are presented to you when you start. But you can go into the available icon section. There is a project fund Awesome that supplies a free set. And this set, uh, from this set, you can select the icons that you want to see in your notes. So if you, every time I, I want to add a note, I figure, oh, it's missing. So at least you can create your own set and use that for your categories. Another big thing, in my opinion, and this is for iOS users, uh, you can download the offline maps directly here. You will be presented with a list of available maps. You look for your country, and you just select, and it will start downloading them. Since MapsForge in Smash is a bit a problem on lower zoo levels, at the end of this download, it will generate a tile cache, an MB tiles cache for that layer, and will use it for lower zoom levels in order to provide a smoother navigation. So future steps uh, right now are uh, integration with the Joe Paparazzi survey server and 
Smash will have direct synchronization, export-import, synchronization of survey. I have no time to talk about the Job Apparatus Survey server. It's around one year old, but there is a workshop we had this year at this link, and if you download that, it's a nice PDF which guides you through the installation setup and also how it works to synchronize data with Job Apparatus Mesh. It uses another app to do synchronization. We want to have Smash directly upload and download. Uh, yeah, we will have to write some documentation because we just arrived like <coughs> to do just application. We will start to do some documentation uh, and we will share the same space of Joe Paparazzi. So this will be two partner projects that will stay in the same space because otherwise it gets too much work. So it will share also the mailing list of Joe Paparazzi. We will add back some missing features because it seems sometimes people are using bookmarks and distance logging for tool, I like that, and we need background logging, that's for sure. Last but not least, uh, we want to have localization. Right now it's just in English, but next step is to open up TransEffects. There are a lot of people uh, that have already translated Joe Paparazzi. I'm sure they will be happy to support that also. And then I would really, I wish to add back OpenStreetMap point support. We had that in a uh, older version of Joe Paparazzi, but it was difficult to keep it on a UI um, level, user interface level, uh, to have all the nice icons and whatever. So I think here there is a good playground to add it back and have really a smooth interface to create OpenStreetMap points and synchronize them with the account online. And one wish I had many years ago, or yeah, a couple of years ago, was integration with Mapillary of Joe Paparazzi. And I met uh, the Mapillary guys here in these days, and we had a long chat. And I think with the RSTK, there will be a good possibility to integrate also <coughs> Mapillary. So where do I get those things? If you want to take pictures, now that's the moment, because Geo Paparazzi 6, release candidate 1, because this, these are all versions that are out for testing. After the conference, I will go on vacation three weeks. When I come back, I will open up the issue tracker, I will fix all the issues I find, and then I hopefully will be able to do a release in the market. So at this link, you find the version to install. Let us know at this issue tracker. Regarding Smash, if you are interested in iOS, uh, you can test it using what is called the test flight application. Uh, you just, at this link, you will find instruction on how to do that. You will just need to install one application and clicking on that, it will just give you the possibility to install Smash and try it out as if it was from the market. And Android users that would like to try Smash uh, can download at this link an APK and just play with it. And thank you very much. I'm done with this. Oh man, I'm happy you can talk fast because this was really, there was something. Um, you, yeah, you, but you've been busy. Okay, so who's got a question for Andrea? Yeah. Uh, thank you. So it's very, very interesting. So I'm, it's the first time that I see the Geo Paparazzi. I'm sorry. So I'd like to ask some uh, uh, the stupid or the fundamental question. So mobile phone is the only way to communicate the data collected from the mobile phone stored in the Geo Paparazzi server, or there are other ways to communicate with the server database collected from. Uh, uh, Otherwise, you'll not be on the streams. <laughs> so to upload, you, there is a specified API. So you can use either Joe Paparazzi or create your own system to upload data. And to get the data, you can use, uh, in the default configuration to keep it very small, we use a one file database that is called H2GIS. It's very nice, and for smaller environment, it's uh, very quick to install against PostGIS. But it supports also, you can also use it with PostGIS. So at that point, you can access your PostGIS server and do whatever is necessary. Okay. Uh, just one thing, 
uh, at the last code spring in Sri Lanka with Maria, uh, which is not here, we started to make uh, the support for the connection to Geo Network. So that is also something ongoing. It's all that could also be a possibility, let's say. Looking for a second question? I hear a yes. No, there was not a yes. In any case, what else is coming up? You probably skipped something here. There's one thing that maybe, uh, maybe people will ask because it's VTM, so it's vector tile map, and the really important thing is right now, there is no vector tile map in there, but VTM comes automatically configured. So the next thing will be switch on those data sources, which mean, will mean you have online vector tile maps, which is beautiful, but we will also create a driver for MB tiles, not the bitmaps, but the MB tiles for vector tile map. And when that comes, it will be a competitor with MapsForge because the sizes are comparable and uh, you can store different information. It's, it, it's more flexible than MapsForge, which is OpenStreetMap open data and that's it. So this is for sure something we will work on.